This is Stars and Scopes with your friend Uma. Updated every new and full moon with guidance based on planetary transits in the current sky and extra support from tarot. For accuracy, take a look at your rising sign first if you know it, and do feel free to listen to your sun, moon and rising if you'd like the full picture. If you're interested in your birth chart, check out the readings page at umaruby.com. And if you'd like to support the work, head over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash umaruby and you can buy me a coffee. Finally, if you're a visual learner, look up Uma Ruby Tarot on YouTube and you can watch and learn. Okay, let's take a look. Hello Aries and Aries Rising, welcome to your horoscope for the full lunar eclipse in Taurus, happening on the 8th of November at 10.02pm if you're in the southern hemisphere with me. How's it going so far? <laughs> um, all reports that I'm receiving and getting are that eclipse season is sure eclipsing. So we've got the second instalment of this round that's sort of imminent. Now I want you to think about a couple of dates straight off the bat, Aries. I want you to think about around November 19th of last year, so nearly a year ago. This is when the first eclipse in Taurus happened for this group of them. And then there was another solar eclipse this year, April 30th which was in Taurus too. So this is the third instalment of this kind of shedding uh, that we've been speaking about and preparing for and trying to relax through. So this is all playing out where you find autonomy, really. It's where you find the ability to store away, you know, cash, assets, whatever, for your own self and to have something in your pocket that belongs to you and it can you know maybe things like your your values might be coming into into the spotlight as well and your talents as well the second house is all about that that kind of stuff and i feel that having just had this solar eclipse in the opposite direction in the eighth house of as we've said before, soul contracts, but perhaps how you're bound to other folks in some way. This could be to do with inheritance or it could be to do with rental contracts, things like that. But there's been a shedding there. And so now your autonomy is coming into the spotlight. The way that you take care of yourself is being highlighted at this eclipse. And it's been playing out for a year now, there's been a focus on this part of your life, Aries, and there's been possibly some toing and froing and some fights and some arguments and some power that you've had to maybe relinquish and hand over to others, to those that care about you, to those that you're indebted to, to those that are you're in collaboration with. So... This is not new territory. This is not something that's coming, going to come and sidewind you out of the blue. This is definitely a part of life that you've been kind of trying to get on top of. And it's been a little while and I'm sure that there's been, uh, I can really feel it. There's like a sort of there's an anger, quick to anger maybe. I say this because... The planet Mars, your ruler, has just stationed retrograde. It was on the 31st of this month in October that it's taken a step back. And so when a planet that is so willing and wanting us to charge ahead and to move forward with passion and fire and all of that kind of stuff, for it to station retrograde and go backwards is kind of giving me this idea that we've got to cool that gasket we've got to regulate a little bit here because there could be a propensity or a propulsion to argue about this sort of stuff. You're fiercely independent, Aries, and that's something that we all admire and love you for. We find it really beautiful and really encouraging and hopeful for the rest of us to look to you as an example. But for whatever reason, at the moment, there has been a need to lean on or rely on or to... Mm, mm. Hmm. there are collaborations at play right now and you need to honour 
everyone involved, not just yourself here. And this Mars stationing retrograde in your third house, which is where we communicate what we know, where we communicate our info and our language. It's, uh, I can see Saturn in Aquarius in your 11th house as well. It's formed a square with this lunation. Now we know about Saturn squares. We know about the Saturn Uranus squares that have been happening for the last bit of time as well. And this time, it's not an exact one. Saturn's at 18 degrees, Uranus is at 16 degrees. So it's a couple of degrees difference, but Uranus is in an exact conjunction with this moon. So I feel that there's something sort of, there's an emotional watershed that's about to happen in regard to this willingness for you to revolutionize or rebel against the systems and the way that folks, you know, in the world, in regular life, uh, earn and save money. There's something that you want to rally against and it's been there for some time. It's been really sitting in, you know, Uranus takes quite a long time to move around. So it's slow building, but this lunation just has me thinking that there's like a, an emotional spotlight on your autonomy or your lack of, maybe. Perhaps there's something here about being too beholden, too reliant on other people that you're just really willing to shed or shift or maybe just take it and realize that everything's a cycle in this life and it's not going to be forever but for right now you do need to rely on on these collaborations to support you to to carry you through unless you can actually take this moment to revolutionize and to have it stick to make it really work there's a couple of tarot cards here that I pulled out to talk about the sky. We, we're not, we're familiar with these ones. So here's Saturn, boundaries. There's the moon in Taurus, six of pentacles. That's give and take. That's having enough and paying it forward. That's receiving when in need. And then there's the sun. So sun's still in Scorpio. We're still, we're right in the middle of Scorpio season. But there's a little reprieve here. There's something almost nostalgic about the Six of Cups. So in that way of eighth house, I wonder what's being in this sort of emotional state that you might be feeling that you're in right now. This kind of coming to understand or reconcile these collaborations that have been keeping you afloat. There's something nostalgic in the feeling of this there's something about and it could be to do with your child self you know it could be this if this is support from your literal parents then there could be something here that is a bit um yeah nostalgic and 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 like gracious about the whole thing. The Six of Cups does talk about a time gone by or a time before, a time <clears throat> perhaps when you were in reception of this uh, support, that it was quite nice. And there was, yeah, there's, you perhaps you can look forward to that space, that, that moment when you come into your own and you can start taking care of yourself. I feel like I've had this conversation with you for like at least six months, which is probably apt Aries because it was about six months ago that we had the last eclipse in Taurus in your second house. So I wonder what happened there. I wonder what all of this information, you know, those, those boundaries there in the 11th in your sense of community as well. I don't know how that's going for you. If you feel sort of separate from them or if you feel that you've given yourself too much to community that you've actually had to put up a bit of a boundary that that this idea this version of community isn't maybe something that you want anymore or that's not really gelling and it's yeah so there's there's pressure from both sides it's <laughs> really funny because i did pull you some intuitive tarot to switch into as well aries and I've got the Six of Pentacles again. So there, there's the moon. There's that... I'm almost, I almost feel like I'm being told to remind you that you are not... You can take your cap out of your hand, maybe, if you know what that phrase means. Like, you don't have to feel disempowered by 
relying on the resources of other folks when you're in need. The trick is, is to work and activate and develop resources of your own in order to pay it forward and then to give those folks a, a shoulder to lean on when they need it. There's something really reciprocal about the Six of Pentacles. It's a really measured, um, honest space of uh, generosity and kind of like um, there's something really nice and ethical about this card too. So I don't – that was one of the intuitive cards, so it's a double down on this sort of notion for you got the Queen of Swords, so there's some blonde in a white go-go boot that has, yeah, written you, she's read you the right act again. <laughs> You've been given some sort of like kind of almost caustic but caring information. Someone has said to you, no, you're actually not, you can't get away with this perspective. This is not how it's playing out. I told you that this is what's going on and you can't really argue with a Queen sorry, but the Queen of Swords really is quite direct and quite maybe full on some in some uh, angle of the way that she gets the information across, but she's, it comes from care. And I can see here that there's, we've shifted along to the Seven of Pentacles, okay, so that's the next stage after the Six, that's sort of on your own two feet, having planted everything and waiting for it to bloom. So I wonder if you feel like this, like you're in, like anticipation of what might be coming that you, you know, I don't doubt for a moment that you've been working your keister off, Aries. That's, that's what you do. But perhaps it's been a little kind of, if I can just get this over the line, if we can just reach this next phase of activation, then the, the cash will start to flow. Then I can start to feel, um, yeah, like, uh, that, it wasn't all for nothing, maybe. On the back of the deck, I got the Queen of Wands, which I see as you. This is fire. You're fire, Aries. You're a fire queen. So I see that this hard conversation that you've had with the Queen of Swords was really in order to get you back into the space of, of empowerment to be the queen yourself, you know? The Queen of Wands is beautiful and, like so electric and so magnetic and she remembers everyone's name in the room and she's great at introducing folks and learning their interests. She's very passionate and vibrant and um, uh, spicy. <laughs> and maybe that shine's been rubbed off from you a little bit, Aries. Maybe you haven't been feeling so spicy lately and it's because of this continual feeling of like you're a charity case or something like that like you just can't get you can't pick up you can't get it rolling as much as you want to and as much as you've been working your butt off there's something about and potentially the environment that you're in you know it could be to do with this community i feel i can see there's like a blockage between you and a sense of community there's like a wall that's going up and you could be setting that wall up or there could be just be, it could just be falling <clears throat> out of favour with, you know, that, that version of community. And I've got to say that that's all right. You don't have to feel so um, guilty about it. You can feel, definitely you can feel the grief of, of that cycle wrapping up. And as we talked about the last eclipse, you know, there's that definite space for, for grief. But I wonder what's going to appear, when it's, what's it's going to show itself to you at this eclipse in your second house, Aries. Remember that it's going to just arrive, you know, something will, something's got to give, something will shift. So you can, again, like we did last fortnight, you can get off your own back and you can not have to maybe try and activate so much in the second house, just really let it flow and think back to a year ago and think back to April of this year. And is there a story that's starting to be told with those dates? And then is there a second coming of that kind of feeling on the 8th of November? I hope that made sense, Aries. And I hope that you're doing all right, you know. I want to say it again. I'm super proud of you. I think you're awesome. <laughs> uh, that's it from me. Uh, we've got a new moon in Sagittarius 
in two weeks after this, and that's going to be a nice reprieve from eclipses. We're going to keep a rolling. Mars will still be retrograde, so, you know, think before you speak. But the uh, ninth house is where we get to elevate our spirituality, elevate our philosophies on life. And this is a great moment of activation, a new moon, to start calling in something in that area of your life. I see. I have a feeling that's going to be good for you, Aries. That'll be a really nice, uh, almost like a fresh start, I would say, after these eclipses. Uh, head to umaruby.com and get your birth chart read by me. I've been having the best time doing it. I've made a lot of really great new friends in the process. You can go to the readings tab on the website and then there's a list of readings. There's many different types and and uh, journeys that we can go down together. But yeah, do it, do it, do it. umaruby.com. Get your birth chart read. I'll be seeing you in two weeks, Aries. I love you very much. Take care. Bye.